starting the morning off here on, on what's uh, commonly known as uh, the Diamond Beach. It's, it's basically the uh, Black Sand Beach that really runs the whole south coast um, from Vic right the way across and out towards the Reykjanes Peninsula. But here at Jockelson, the icebergs, um, as they uh, melt slowly in the lagoon, sl make their way out at the channel here and are washed ashore. So uh, there's a different scene here every morning as icebergs uh, melt away, move on, are washed out to sea, and then fresh ones come out from the lagoon. Uh, it's good to get down first thing in the morning because the black sand beach, just if you're photographing icebergs uh, without the waves, uh, the black sand is pristine, you know? And this little fella behind me here, and I'll just bring the camera around to give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. And look at that, look at the contrast between the uh, the iceberg, this giant ice cube, and the beautiful black sand uh, beneath it. And it sits nicely enough on its own. I'm using a, a wide angle lens, and I was taking the shot in portrait mode, and got a lot of that black sand in, and uh, used a, a grad for the sky. a little time here about 40 minutes before uh, sunrise I'm sorry muted sunrise at that uh, I proceeded down to the shoreline there and there are so many icebergs and it's just a matter of trying to find one or a collection of two or three uh, this morning I found two uh, single icebergs and I stayed with them uh, a few people got knocked over with uh, some freak waves that come in they're not that freak they're quite regular they come in every five minutes or so and, um, and I, luckily enough, I saw them in the distance. You see the big surf coming in. I, I better get a move on because it's, uh, it's nine o'clock now. I'm going on an ice cave uh, tour, just a standard one at 10 o'clock. I'm not sure whether I'll vlog on that, but I'll certainly put photographs up if I don't. Um, so there's... Unfortunately, uh, I didn't manage to vlog uh, the ice cave, but it was a truly magical experience. Um, it was very rushed. We only had about 30 minutes inside the cave, and I found it, I really found it a big challenge to get anything worthwhile, and I'll see what I can patch together in Photoshop, but it'll certainly be a patch together, and uh, if I get that done by the time this video goes out, well, then I'll put uh, my, the best of what I got up there. Actually, the guy took us then uh, outside uh, to uh, what he described as a hole uh, in the ground and uh, he offered me uh, uh, the, to stay in, in the actual cave and to have it more or less to myself. Um, but I said, listen, I'll go around and have a look and I can come back down. And to be honest, the, uh, the structure, uh, the ice structure, um, that he brought us around in the open, uh, in, in the open light as such, uh, was really fantastic. But as you can see here, I've got the uh, magnificent uh, Easter horn uh, behind me, and uh, the light just didn't materialize. It's, uh, it's, it's blue hour. I've come up uh, from the place that I was shooting, um, which was a little bit precarious. Uh, uh, this place requires the utmost uh, care and uh, I waited five or ten minutes to make sure that the, the spot was dry but even still the waves here are so unpredictable and they're monstrous absolutely monstrous the place is 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 wonderful uh, when you arrive here if you know it uh, from being a landscape photographer uh, when you arrive on a scene and see the immensity of the uh, mountain uh, behind me there you can just see the whole stretch of of the easter horn and stretching back towards western horn there in in the in the very distance now on the way over i, I actually had some uh, reindeer about 12 or 13 reindeer and i took a long lens out and uh, took on my wildlife photography um, portfolio and uh, was crawling on the grass to try to get close to them but they were well onto me and by god they can move those uh, reindeer so um, i think that's really it for uh, this evening um, you know it's been a long day i'm quite tired uh, we started off the day uh, at the uh, diamond beach 
and I think I've got some nice shots from there and uh, moving on to the ice cave which was an, just an experience in itself I would have been as happy just not taking photographs just sitting in the cave and looking at that uh, that cool glacier mint blue um, and it probably would have been better use of the time because it truly is an experience uh, and well worth it if you're coming to ice and you're thinking about doing an ice cave um, between October I think and March uh, go do it uh, absolutely do it um, and so tomorrow morning um, it's going to be uh, Westerhorn, Stockness. Uh, so I might drive back in that direction tonight, and overnight on the beach. night here at Stockness. Uh, there's fresh snow um, has fallen overnight. It's still the forecast is looking good. There's high altitude clouds there. Everything's looking good so I need to get my game in order today um, to find a good composition uh, down here uh, amongst the dunes. I've walked about 30 yards from the camper van and um, I made the decision I need to find a composition quickly enough and work that composition and stay with it. Um, and I found this nice uh, leading line. You'll see it's a white leading line, the fresh snow uh, through the dunes leading to the uh, Westerhorn uh, mountain in the background. And I'm just playing around. I'm on the side about whether to go for a portrait shot or a landscape shot and I may take both. Um, the portrait shot is good in that I get this, this is more of a leading line, the actual, uh, the grasses here and, and then this beautiful folds of snow leading into Stockness. I think it's about 15 or 20 minutes uh, to uh, sunrise so hopefully um, we get a bit of light catching the clouds uh, above there. Well, this is the story of the lost drone because uh, not long after I had made my composition uh, and 20 minutes before the sunrise, I made the wonderful decision to fly the drone because the light was muted, it was beautiful. I thought, why not? Um, but I, I, I lost sight of it and uh, it dropped down. And, um, and I, I said, I better go and retrieve it, you know, and I can come back and get the shot. So off I went and lo and behold, I came across another composition that really did it for me. You know, it was just beautiful. And uh, I put the snow in the, in the foreground, quite a lot of snow with a little bit of shade and uh, a, 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 a kind of very rounded, um, not so much a leading line. Scaffatel uh, National Park and I'm actually in the campground here and it's a beautiful place it's a very peaceful place and it's protected by the mountains on all sides that wasn't the case uh, yesterday afternoon as uh, between Jockelson Lagoon and here I had to pull over on a number of occasions and it was a very treacherous uh, very strong winds up to 15 miles a second and uh, lots of snow and wind and that's, uh, at, at points I couldn't see the road ahead of me um, like not even four or five yards ahead 
So that took a long time to get here and I was quite exhausted when I did. So after Stockness uh, yesterday morning, um, unfortunately, I, 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 the only thing that I photographed was that storm that I passed through from a great distance. And I'll put some of those photographs uh, up now, or one of those photographs up now. It was a wonderful event to watch from the distance as the snow uh, whirled around uh, the uh, highest peaks in Iceland here. Um, which are in the actual park here, Scaffoldtail uh, Park. So this morning, um, I've just got out of the camper van here and I saw these beautiful uh, bare, uh, I think they're roan trees, uh, behind me on the slope. This is the uh, route up, uh, it leads to uh, Svartifoss, which is about a 30 minute walk or so. And I've done that uh, uh, in the last vlog or the vlog before, I believe. So the bare rowan trees here, um, I'm looking for patterns in the actual tree using a 400mm lens. and. Um, I'm not sure whether anything will turn out, but I've got one that I just like the, the mix of, of, of branches and twigs and snow. Um, so I may put that up on the screen here. Again. So today I'm going to make my way back towards uh, the Reykjanes Peninsula to fly out uh, back to Dublin uh, tomorrow morning and um, let's see where we'll stop. One place I do want to stop, and I'd love to get it in this kind of snowy weather, uh, is the DC tree on the, uh, on the Black Beach. So uh, let's see how the day goes. Arrived at the famous uh, uh, plane wreck here, the DC-3, which I believe was crashed in 1973, a US Army plane, um, which apparently ran out of fuel. I'm not far off that myself. I should have got a film fake, but I have to wait until I get to Selfoss, which is an hour and 20 minutes away. But uh, I took the, the lazy way out here and I took the bus out and there's a few tourists around. I ran down, um, so I was the first here and it was a, an absolutely uh, beautiful black dark cloud and it started hailing straight away uh, when we got down here. I just tried to darken the exposure here on the video camera so you can see that cloud and a little bit of light on the horizon. It really, it, oh my God, it really is very impressive now. Looking behind, you've got this wall of a uh, dark uh, rain uh, and snow behind and you've got the the white here I'm just playing around with different um, just different simple very simple exposures trying to take advantage of that fantastic darkness uh, uh, above and the white snow um, so I'm not saying I'm thrilled with the shots I'm getting but I'm happy enough with them it's uh, three o'clock in the afternoon so it's not a sunrise or sunset but this light suits this location uh, as good or if not better I think um, so I'm going to continue here shooting away waiting for the few tourists that have come down on the bus with me to try to get behind the plane and maybe I'll clone one or two of them out in Photoshop um, the chap that's sitting on top of the plane now if he doesn't get off it soon I'll shoot him. So there it is. <laughs> 